Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice in the Lord here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. All oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. All the children are invited to join in the children's liturgy of the Word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, and my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me in the robe of salvation, and wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants, and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in all circumstances give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophetic utterances, test everything, retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. But there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ.
Here's a message from St. Paul. Rejoice always. Now it's interesting, if we look at St. Paul, he wrote 16 letters. This was the first one he wrote. The last letter he wrote was written from prison. Letter to the Philippians. And he was actually on death row at the time. Now we think about this. He's telling us to rejoice. And he was a man whose career involved all kinds of adversity. Uh, he was beaten with rods. He was left for dead a couple of times. He faced angry crowds. And on and on. So what is there to rejoice about in a situation like that? Well, he gives us the, the clue to this, the key to the whole thing. That when he talks about rejoicing, he's talking about it, the deep abiding joy that comes with a relationship uh, with God. Because uh, he, he goes on to say, this time, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In Galatians 5, which is another letter, this, that's chapter 5 of Galatians, he, he writes that joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. He lists the fruit. Love is the first one. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, generosity, mildness, faith, and chastity. So to be close to God uh, habitually is to open oneself up to joy. It doesn't mean the person is never sad. I mean, I can think of the picture of St. Therese, the little flower they called her, who talked about smiling through your tears. That even in the midst of, of difficulties, we don't let ourselves uh, become habitually depressed or saddened because of external circumstances. We, if we have a foundation in, in the Lord, it, makes, it should make all the difference in the world to our outlook on life. And it's not to suggest that we put on a fake smile and think everything is just good. No. But what it means is that uh, to rejoice in God, to, take, uh, to share in His joy, is an antidote to the emptiness of modern day living. Modern day living does not make people happy, meaning to say that we live in a very secularized culture which has little place for God, Christmas itself has become very compromised. Um, some of you, or many of you, have seen the Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. It's a classic. But here's the problem with the Dickens' Christmas Carol. What Charles Dickens did was he opened the door to a secularized version of Christmas. What he, what he did was okay to a point, but there's not much room in there for God. So we, the thing is, the world really doesn't understand what we should understand. So there's a great deal of sadness in the world about many things connected with the emptiness of modern living. Now, people have counterfeits for joy that, some, that uh, they, they think will take the place of real joy, the joy that they don't know. What are some of the counterfeits for joy? One of them is pleasure. Now, I'm not saying pleasure is a bad thing. I mean, if people didn't derive pleasure from eating, many people would starve. Pleasure is a good thing with, within certain limits. Too much pleasure and a person gets sick or intoxicated or what have you. Pleasure is not an end in itself. It's fleeting and it tends to be superficial. It does not substitute for real joy. So we have to be careful. Some people turn to the use of so-called recreational drugs or alcohol so that they have a temporary sense of well-being but they're only kidding themselves. Because oftentimes uh, these things lead to a depressed state. The Lord doesn't want us to live that way. He wants us to experience what it means to uh, have a certain amount of exuberance and uh, a, a gratitude for what He has done, what He provides, and for His very, his very uh, self. Um, a woman... Uh, was threatened with a possible separation from her husband because the child she had conceived was not the biological child of her husband. And um, yet she was not crestfallen. She was troubled, but she trusted in God. 
who am I speaking about? Blessed Virgin Mary. You can look at the response for today's first reading. The responsorial of my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. These are the words on the lips of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the Gospel of Luke. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Can we say that? We should be able to say those words with deep conviction. Jesus is our Savior. He loves us. He has great plans for us. We should rejoice in these things. So what do we do about opening ourselves up to the joy of God? Well, St. Paul says we must pray. Pray always, pray without ceasing. How do we do that? We do it by giving ourselves an opportunity to have blocks of time in the day to pray, devotional time. More than five minutes or three minutes or two minutes. Half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever it takes. If we have these blocks of time, one in any way, two possibly, three maybe, uh, it will make all the difference in the world in terms of our outlook on life. We won't be prone to anger and other things uh, that uh, afflict so many people in the modern world. Uh, the, uh, another thing is forgiveness. One psychiatrist or psychologist said that if his clients all forgave other people, he would lose 90% of his clientele. Again, Jesus is the answer. The world's greatest psychologist is Jesus in the sense that we follow Jesus, it, it will heal the soul. I'm not saying that you know, people don't have need for counseling. Sometimes people do. But the point is that Jesus can heal people. We, we need to understand that. It's important for us also to have a certain detachment from material things. Not that material things are bad. I mean, we are, all, we are material creatures, but they can't make us ultimately happy. Uh, I remember a documentary uh, about the life of, of Catholic monks many years ago on television. The camera crew and so forth went to this monastery. They were amazed at how happy the monks were because these are men who take vows of celibacy, poverty, and uh, vows of obedience to a superior. They don't have the trappings, of the material trappings that so many of us take for granted, that they were filled with joy. Camera crew, the director and so forth were amazed. How can this be? I remember a nun from the Daughters of St. Paul. Daughters of St. Paul run these Catholic bookstores. But she was talking about one of the bookstores where she used to work. It was, I think it was in California, I don't remember, but it was in a skyscraper. It was a storefront first floor. So every day a woman would come into the store who was very depressed. Life to her was very empty. She was unhappy. Now the woman herself had no particular religion, which was a big issue. Um, the, the woman was the one who owned the skyscraper. She had everything possible in terms of material of wealth, but she was very unhappy. She didn't have God in her life. In contrast to a man outside the store who had nothing but the clothes on his back and he's full of exuberance. Very interesting. Things cannot make people happy by themselves. They support life, but they don't really substitute for real living. We need God. We need His love. We need His forgiveness. We need His peace. We need to be open to Him. We need to pray. We need to live that way. And then we can experience, what St. Paul is saying, capacity to rejoice always. Because our rejoicing will be based not on the shifting sands of material things, but on the Lord Himself as the solid foundation of our life. Ultimately, of course, there's no perfect happiness in this world. That comes in heaven. But we can at least experience a taste of it here.
I believe in one God, Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. The Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our Savior was crucified on the cross of Pilate, suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, then spoke into the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Our dear Lord urges us to have recourse to persistent prayer. With that in mind, let us bring to him the following petition. That each member of the church on earth may be watchful and ready for Christ's coming, we pray. Lord, Lord we are prayer. That the leaders of nations may grant liberty to people who have been unjustly imprisoned, we pray. Lord, Lord we are prayer. That the poor and downhearted may hear the good news and know the kindness of active Christians, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Pat C.Z. Stafford, Abby Forster, Robert Hall, Ruth Hamilton, Bridget Waite, Patricia Serino, Vicki Weber, Wally Kuhn, Sam Astorino, and Catherine Baraja, we pray. Lord, for those who have died, especially for Mary this hour, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we are mindful of your continual providential care for which we give you eminent thanksgiving. Please hear our prayers, not that we are so deserving, but because of your love. Through your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spirit for our drink.
this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him back, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
takes away the sins of the world. Run for the cross and the offer of the Lamb. Lord,
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tonight at 7 is our annual music ministry Christmas concert, which is entitled Christmas in Scripture and Song. The concert will be out an hour-long affair with refreshments to follow. It is free and open to the public, so they'll be right here tonight at 7. The Knights of Columbus uh, has its uh, monthly breakfast until 12.30 today at the Lodge on Route 20 in Geneva. Finally, um, take the bulletin home because uh, the schedule of the Masses are in it. You need to go to two Masses next weekend. There's not a two-for-one deal going on. <laughs> two Masses. So one is the Sunday obligation, uh, which can be fulfilled, obviously, Saturday night. The other one is the Christmas obligation. So please uh, be aware of what the schedule is. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.